The year is 2006. Jinko jeans and wallet chains are cool. You got all your favorite Linkin Park songs on your iPod Nano, and you hate your fucking stepdad. Unlike you nerds, I never had to learn healthy ways to handle my emotions because I got an Xbox 360 for Christmas in 05. Instead of wasting my time on personal growth, I was running gangs, tending to gardens, and racing the mean streets of Rockport. This is Need for Speed Most Wanted. My first thought after launching the game on PC was, holy shit, these graphics are terrible. Are my nostalgia goggles really that bad? The answer is actually no. The Xbox 360 version of the game did have much better graphics than the PC version. I wasn't going to stand for this GameCube bullshit, so I went and installed Redux. Redux is a collection of graphical and quality of life improvement mods. They make the game playable. My first thought after launching the game for the second time was sweet. It is the present day, my dudes. The BMW from the game's cover art enters stage right and lines up with a black Mustang. Then we get this. This is a live action cutscene, which is an inherently ridiculous decision. What's really remarkable about this game's cutscenes though, isn't that they're live action, it's that they're used exclusively to insult your intelligence. You're a fucking idiot, the game knows that, and it wants you to know that it knows that. This will become more obvious the more we see. Some jabroni pops in just to say this. How's your car running? Hey, first. Miss Fan Service here collects your pink slips, and this guy's looking at you like you just punted his toddler. Then we get this. He's dangerous. Be careful, he'll swap paint if he has to. First, I'm gonna take your ride, then I'm gonna take your girl. Get ready for that. Stay focused. He's rolling on a lot of power, so wait for him to shift first. Um, what? Look, I'm not a car guy. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I ended up Googling this one because it just sounds so stupid. What she's saying is that because his car has too much horsepower, it's not able to generate enough traction after he shifts, which should create an opportunity for you to put distance between the two of you. But why does she say it like she's on a police procedural talking about hacking? They've already burned through the NCIS public firewall. We'll isolate the node and dump them on the other side of the router. I'm trying. It's moving too fast. Oh, this is not good. We're using our connection to the Aphis database. Sever it. I can't. It's a point attack. He or she is only going after my machine. It's not possible. The other driver blows a kiss to Miss Fan Service, and then he makes another super angry face, and then both cars take off. The cutscene's perspective shifts so that it's now following the police pursuit of you and the other driver. You both zip through the city, passing by a literal Burger King. Two cop cars collide and explode, which is rad. And then you take control of the BMW for the first taste of the game. And it's awesome. In only a few seconds, the game makes it obvious that it's not going to be arcadey, but it also won't let realism get in the way of being fun. After about 30 seconds of driving, you get a phone call from Miss Fan Service. Hey, there's something wrong with your ride. You left a huge oil slick at the start line. You have to end the race fast. The next set of text across the screen says that it's now six days prior and you're entering Rockport City. On the edge of the city, you find Miss Fan Service in her Mazda RX-8. Don't worry, she'll get a name real soon. The two of you cruise together for a little while before being stopped by a police Corvette, which is not at all ridiculous. Out of the Corvette steps Sergeant Cross. Cross approaches the vehicle and we get another live action cutscene. <laughs> oh man. Did you pick the wrong street to run on? This, this is a nice car. Gauges, shifter, wheel. Okay, what? It sounds like he's saying that this is a nice car because it has those things. Will he lose his fucking mind when he sees that the car has cup holders too? I bet he nuts when he sees the FM radio. Is this all for show or is there something more I should know about? I'd like to take a little peek under the hood. Jesus fucking Christ, what does that even mean? Like, I understand that there's a double entendre here, but what is it? Surely no one wrote that line and thought, yes, this means that she wants to see the player's balls. That is normal human vernacular. 
good idea. Let me tell you what's about to happen. We're gonna take your car, tear it apart, and see if it's street legal. You know, I'd lay odds that it ain't. Get a record down here. Looks like your racing days are over. Let me let you in on a little secret. Street racing in Rockport is finished. I've got a beautiful little surprise that's gonna tear you guys apart from the inside out. Now get out of the car. Attention patrol division. Units are in a high-speed pursuit of multiple vehicles, aggressively evading custody. Units in the area directed to clear and head up to provide cover. Next time, you won't be so lucky. If it weren't for the whole reach for his gun thing, honestly, I would kind of like Cross. I think he's funny. Too bad he's a cop. Nice pinstripe. Now it's four days ago. You're cruising the streets. This guy is back, driving an Aston Martin DB9. He does a short mating dance, and then you two prepare to race. This is the first real race of the game. It's easy but it does a lot to show off what the game has in store for the player. After the race is another live action cinematic. What did I tell you? Razor, he shadowed me. I couldn't shut up. Another bolt on Wonder Boy looking to get smoked. Why don't we save you the grief and peel those parts right now? Bolt on or not, that ride is hot. This is just so stupid. Like, the dialogue for men in this game is obviously painful, but the dialogue for the women is so much worse. I'm pretty sure I've heard every single one of these lines in Riley Reed films. Anyways, Miss Fanservice's name is Mia Townsend. She's here to defend you. Faster than anything here. You obviously don't know your car, sweetheart. I know your ride doesn't have a chance. <laughs> My 60 foot or quarter mile, whatever you want to throw on the table, smokes anything here, including this pump gas kit car. Well, then where's your punk money then? Five grand. Five grand, says my boy will smoke this clown. What's your boy have to do with this? I ain't racing this nobody. And I ain't taking orders from some chick who just rolled onto the scene. Okay, this guy right here, Ronnie, is the star of every cutscene that he's in. Huge golden retriever energy on this guy. Yeah. This here is the number 15 guy on the blacklist. You got a lot of rep to earn before you get to run with him. I love Ronnie so much. We have to protect him at all costs. Thanks for the update. Are we doing this or what? I got him. Everyone gathers around as you and Razor's boy, aka Toru Sato, aka Bull, prepare to race. Mia decides to up the ante. Why don't we make it 10 grand? Oh yeah, you, you wanna amp this up? Let's do it right. Yeah, give me the police. We got a couple of guys about to street race down here at the shipyards. You better send the cops right away. Maybe an ambulance too. When he's through with you, I never want to see your face again. About 20 seconds into the race, the player encounters two police cruisers, initiating a pursuit. The chase begins, introducing the mechanic that the game is largely built around. It doesn't get hyper in-depth at this stage, but it's cool that it was introduced so early. Marketing leaned heavily into this aspect of the game, so it's nice to see that the promise was delivered on right away. Now it's only two days ago, you're building reputation and you're winning races. You get a call from an unknown man driving a red GTO. Well, look what the underground led loose. Let's see how good you do in the daylight. Now this race has three other racers, but it doesn't matter. We're still in the first act. This is basically tutorial territory. 
This will be an easy race. After you win, you get two more phone calls. Good run. I like your style. Just make sure you watch your back with these guys, all right? See you around. What's up, poser? I'm glad you're putting it down out there. I really am, because I can't wait to get a crack at that ride. What? Didn't anybody tell you? You gotta put your ride on the line to run against a blacklist racer, and that is why people aren't stupid enough to do it. I'll be waiting. Suddenly, we're back in the present day. The BMW enters stage right again, Ronnie is still a jabroni, Razor still does whatever this is, Mia still gives her weird advice. We get a few shots of the BMW and the Mustang at the starting line. This time, you get to participate in the race from the beginning. Unlike the other racers to this point, Razor actually provides a significant challenge. Thanks Rubber Band AI. The player gets caught in another pursuit, this one lasting about a minute, ending at the collision between cop cars from the opening cinematic. Mia calls you again, once again telling you that something is wrong with your car, but this time, your BMW sputters to a halt and we watch the aftermath in a live action cutscene. Thank you for the ride. I knew you weren't black this material. Hey, where's your punk money now? What happened? What happened is he's all show and no go. <laughs> <laughs> She's mine now. And I'm gonna ride her like you never could. <laughs> Hard and flat out. Hey, Mia. Sweetheart. The winner circle's over here. <laughs> Cop! 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 Bus stops that way, champ. UC thought you were the one, but you're mine now. Hey, where's your fancy ride? <laughs> Who cares? He's not gonna need him where he's going. And they're gonna love you in the big house, baby. And then the game actually begins. So, Mia picks you up. I heard they didn't have enough on you. Guess it's hard to nail you for street racing when you don't have a ride. Way to rub it in. Razor set you up. He messed with your car. Gets worse. He's number one on the blacklist. And he used your ride to get there. To get back in, you have to become notorious. Win races and build up your bounty. I've hooked you up with a place to lay low in, but first, you gotta get yourself a new ride. Hey Ed, it's Mia. I got a friend coming by. Do me a favor, hook him up. Thanks. I owe you one. How do I make the kinds of friends that she has? Thanks for the 25 Gs, I owe you one. When I first played the game back in 06, I picked the Cobalt SS as my first car because it has the highest top speed of the three. Because I'm a sucker for nostalgia, I did the same thing this time. Back in 06, I also customized my car to look like the car from Tony Hawk Underground, so I did that as well. Then I left for the safe house that Mia marked on the map. She meets you there and gives you a rundown of how the blacklist works. You can store your ride here. Consider it your safe house. You can use it to lie low when your heat gets too high. If you want to take out Razor and get your ride back, you got a lot of work to do. You have to work your way up the blacklist and take out everyone on the way. As far as they're concerned, you're just working to get back into the blacklist. Pick the right event, get enough bounty, and you can challenge a ranked racer. Once they're all out of the way, Razor's all yours. Cool? I'll let you get back to business. I'll call you when the time's right. Later. Blacklist rival number 15 is Sunny, and he drives a Volkswagen Golf GTI. This is low-key one of my favorite cars in the game. I still love hatchbacks to this day, and I blame it all on Sunny. In order to challenge Sunny, you have to win three races. Fortunately, you don't have a hard time deciding which ones because there are only three available. There is a two-lap circuit race, 
a sprint from one point to the other, and a lap knockout. The lap knockout is a circuit race, but the last racer at the end of each lap is eliminated. So it really isn't all that different from a circuit, but it feels different. Because it's still so early in the game, these races are easy and they give you the chance to move on to the milestones. Milestones are accomplishments that kind of prove your reputation. They always involve the police. At this point, you have a few milestones available to you. You can collide with two police cars during a pursuit. You can involve yourself in a pursuit that takes longer than two minutes. And you can involve yourself in a pursuit that takes fewer than four minutes. So fortunately, you can do all three of these milestones in one pursuit. There are also speed trap milestones. In these ones, you essentially have to drive past a traffic camera as fast as you possibly can. And if you reach a certain speed threshold, you succeed. The speed traps are the easiest, so they're usually the ones that I knock out first. The last item on your checklist is accruing 20,000 bounty. There is no unit here, it's just bounty. You accrue bounty through police chases, and the rate of accrual depends on how wanted you are, represented by your heat level. You'll start the game at the lowest heat level, level one. We'll talk about higher heat levels later, but right now, I wanna give an overview of police chases. At the start of a police chase, a pursuit bar will appear at the bottom of the screen. The farther you get from the police and the faster you drive, the more that bar will move to the right, inching you closer to evasion. Once the bar fully reaches the right, a cooldown period begins, and if you can outlast that cooldown period, you'll escape. You can shorten the cooldown period by finding hideouts, or end the pursuit immediately by entering your safe house. Now, the slower you drive and the closer you get to the police, the more the pursuit bar moves to the left, which gets you closer to arrest. On arrest, you'll have to pay outstanding fines, and your car will get an impound strike. Three strikes, and you lose the car for good. As the heat level rises, the police chases get harder. Their cars improve, their numbers increase, and they'll employ a wider array of tactics. At level one, you'll only be pursued by five cruisers. They use occasional rolling roadblocks, but otherwise they'll just follow you, let you do pretty much whatever you want. After checking off all of the necessary items, you get your chance at Sunny. Blacklist challenges are multi-legged events in which you have to win all of the legs in order to claim the ultimate victory. At this point on the blacklist, there are only two legs. And for Sunny, both of those legs are circuit races. At the beginning of each blacklist challenge is a short cinematic. They're not particularly noteworthy, so after this one, I'll only talk about the one or two that I do find interesting. Here, you sit parked at a red light, Sunny approaches, and the first race begins. After completing all of the legs of a blacklist challenge, you select two of six available bonuses, called markers. There are markers for custom visuals, aesthetic parts, and performance parts as well as three mystery markers. The mystery markers can be cash bonuses, get out of jail free cards, or even the pink slip to the blacklist racer's car. While the performance upgrades can be nice, the pink slip is really the one that you want. So I almost always select two mystery markers. Fortunately for me, I got the pink slip to Sunny's car on the first try, but I absolutely would have safe scummed and redone the challenge if I didn't get it. Anything to get my hands on that sweet Volkswagen Golf. The next blacklist rival is Taz. And to take him on, you'll have to win four races, complete three milestones, and accrue 50,000 bounty. This is the pattern for each blacklist racer. The number of races and milestones that you'll have to complete usually increases, and the bounty will be a significant bump up from last time. A new type of race is unlocked this time, the toll booth race. Toll booth races aren't against other drivers, they're actually against the clock. At the beginning of the race, you're allotted a certain amount of time to get from the start line to the first toll booth, at which point you'll have more time added to your allotment as you drive to the next one. There are usually between three and five toll booths in each race of this variety, with a finish line at the end. Personally, these are my favorite races in the game. You don't have to think about strategy, and they almost all take place on the highway, so the only thing on your mind is going fast. For milestones, there are also some new entries. Milestones this time include racking up a certain amount of property damage, incurring a certain amount of bounty in one police chase, and committing a specific number of infractions like speeding or driving off-road. With two sprint races, Taz is an easy blacklist rival. After defeating him, we get another live-action cutscene. I hooked you up with access to the police database. You've been building a rap sheet with the cops. The more heat you bring down on yourself, the more hype and bounty come your way. So make sure you keep track of your rap sheet. Well, 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 what do we got here? Nothing you're ever gonna get. <laughs> you're so sweet. You got lucky. Staying on the blacklist is gonna take a lot more than luck. 
And you better watch your back out there because, well, you never know what might happen, do you? What, you gonna work this ride too? <laughs> Mia, I don't know what your game is, but I'm gonna find out we can't ride this sucker's hype forever. And when he burns out, no more free rides. I know you like it. Stay on top of that rap sheet. I gotta go. I'll hook up with you later. That was actually the last live action cutscene for a long time, which is cool because they're terrible, but it also sucks because they're kind of rad. At this point, I decided to upgrade my GTI. The performance upgrading is pretty limited in this game. There are six or seven parts that can be upgraded, and only sequentially, by which I mean that every part is strictly better than the previous part of the same type and strictly worse than the next one. To put it more plainly, the first set of tires are worse in every way than the second set of tires, which are worse in every way than the third set of tires, and so on. There are no trade-offs to think about. The aesthetic customization is also pretty limited, which is a bummer, because cool cars are kind of the appeal for this series. When I played it back in 06, I was also playing the original Saints Row at the time, so it was extra disappointing to see how little customization Most Wanted has in comparison. In defense of Need for Speed, most Wanted is a cross-generational game, so any features had to work on either all of the platforms or be included on only some of the releases, and both of those options sound like headaches. Regardless, it still isn't hard to design a cool-looking car. There is, once again, a new type of race to complete before challenging the next Blacklist rival, the Speed Trap Race. Speed Trap Races aren't won by the first racer across the line, but by the racer with the highest score at the end of the race. Points are earned by passing through designated Speed Trap locations at a high speed. The first driver across the finish line will have their score set, and then the rest will have their score slowly decremented until they also cross the finish line. The winner is the racer with the highest score after the final car finishes. I like these ones a lot. At this point in the game, I reached heat level 2. At heat level 2, the cruisers from level 1 will be replaced with all black undercover cruisers. The police also have new tricks up their sleeves, trying to box you in and employing legitimate roadblocks. Your best bet for passing roadblocks, if they can't be avoided, is to aim for the rear of a car and activate Speedbreaker. I haven't talked about Speedbreaker to this point, but it's kind of like bullet time for a car. At the press of a button, you slow everything down and greatly increase the mass of your car. This is useful for destroying police and getting through roadblocks, but it's also a huge benefit during races when you're taking a tight angle. For each additional heat level, the number of police that can pursue you increases by 5. So, at heat level 2, I could have 10 police following me. Defeating the 13th Blacklist Racer also unlocks a new section of the map, Camden Beach. It turns out, the suburban sprawl of the game to this point is only one of three sections of the city, Rosewood. Camden Beach introduces a ton of visually interesting pieces to the game, with the most notable being the boardwalk and other waterfront areas. Now is as good of a time as any to talk about Rockport's aesthetics. Rockport is, in a word, tan. Like many first-person shooters of the aughts, Most Wanted seems to have been caught in the idea that beige is gritty, but it makes enough sense that it isn't a distraction here. Rockport is a dying, corrupt, industrial city, and the beige adds to that tone. The decision to set the game in the fall was a good one, with the autumnal scarlets and ambers complementing the game's overall color palette. When aiming to take on the 12th blacklist rival, Izzy, you gain access to yet another race type, drag racing. All you have to do for these is shift at the right time and switch lanes when needed. The game automatically handles steering for you otherwise. Your primary concern during drag races is to avoid totaling your car by crashing into traffic or environmental pieces. The traffic pattern is the same each time you do a specific drag race, so winning them is kind of a matter of playing Simon Says over and over until you get it right. I know I'm probably not selling it well here, but they are really fun. This is the pre-race cinematic for Blacklist Rival 11, Big Lou. Honestly, it fucking slays me. The guy has two people on his payroll to drive yellow eclipses around to help him make an entrance, and they've clearly choreographed the routine here. I mean, what's the daily rate for this kind of work, right? Like, what do you get paid to follow a guy around? The mind boggles. When preparing to challenge Blacklist Rival 10, Baron, I reached heat level 3. The jump from heat level 1 to 2 is pretty minimal, but 2 to 3 is substantial. The primary cruiser goes from the undercover cruiser to the state cruiser, which is faster and stronger than its predecessor. But the police force also starts to employ light SUVs, which they use to straight up ram you head on. At this level, the police will start to attempt pit maneuvers as well, and become all around more aggressive with their swarming, 
So this is the point where police chases actually begin to become a challenge. With a victory over the ninth blacklist rival, Earl, you unlock access to downtown Rockport, completing the map. Downtown Rockport is where the tutorial races took place, and it's home to some of the most exciting races in the game. It's one thing to go 200 on an empty golf course, and it's a whole different thing to go 200 downtown. The next rival that I want to talk about is number 6, Ming. Ming drives a Lamborghini Gallardo. It is 100% worth cheating for this car. If you do not get the Gallardo when you're picking your markers, turn the game off, race them again, and retry. The Gallardo makes the end of the game so much easier and frankly, so much more fun. The combination of speed and handling is critical for the high performance cars that you'll have to face soon and the tight turns downtown. If you haven't played the game before and you end up playing it after watching this, you can come back here and thank me for that tip when you're done. I honestly don't have much to say about the rivals leading up to Razor. You'll race Bull and Ronnie again at 2 and 3, and then that leaves only the twerp himself. In true nuisance fashion, Razor's challenge has 5 races. Immediately beforehand, we get another live action cutscene. Finally. After slogging through 5 races, we get the last cutscene of the game. You'll never hold on to the number one spot. Not with me on your tail. And if you want these, you're gonna have to take them. It's over, Razor. It ain't over until I say it's over. Where's the other guy? He got away. You mean to tell me the most wanted street racer happened to get away? What about the blacklist? Forget the blacklist. They're through. I want every single unit after the guy. Everyone? EVERYONE! Yeah, so it turns out Mia was a cop, you had no idea, and she was on your side for some reason. Razor wasn't the final challenge here. It's this Heat 6 pursuit, and Cross himself will be chasing you in his police Corvette. And you've got your BMW back. That's a lot to take in. I'll give you a minute. I don't remember reaching Heats 4 or 5 in my playthrough, and now I'm all the way at Heat 6. I'll quickly recap what those two Heats are like before I talk about this one. At Heat 4, there are now all black undercover state cruisers, as well as heavy SUVs and pursuit helicopters. Heat 5 includes all of that, plus police corvettes. Going a step further, Heat 6 introduces supercharged SUVs. They're a nightmare because they will catch up to you, they will try to box you in, and they will succeed. After 5 minutes of this nonsense, Mia calls to tell you that you are fucked with a capital F. Your safe houses are compromised, and your only chance of avoiding prison is by launching your car over an old, abandoned bridge that is conveniently ramp-shaped. Because I had to repeat this pursuit so many times, I eventually started trying to make sure that I was roughly in the area of the old bridge once I got the call, because if you're on the other side of the map, you probably don't stand a chance. Approaching the bridge, with undercover corvettes hot on your tail, the only thing left to do is accelerate. While you can return to the game at this point to complete races or free roam, canonically, this is where the game's story ends. After completing the game, I checked out the challenges. Most of them are crap, but there are two exceptions. In challenge 41, you drive a pizza delivery car in a toll booth challenge. The car handles like shit and it can't accelerate, which counterintuitively makes this one a blast. It's hilarious. In challenge 46, you drive a garbage truck and have to destroy $100,000 worth of property during a police chase. The garbage truck is basically unmovable, the mass is so high that nothing can do anything to it really, and so this one's a lot of fun as well. These are the only two that are worth playing, and in order to unlock them, you have to play a ton of challenges beforehand. Skip the challenge series. 
Some general thoughts on the game to wrap this one up. Most Wanted aged extremely well, but not as well as I had hoped, and not as well as I had expected. Before replaying it, I would have insisted that it's the best Need for Speed game, but it simply is not. I replayed Pro Street a few years ago, that's a better game. Heat is a better game as well. Carbon and Underground 2 are both probably better games. I love it, but it's just not top dog. Now having said that, the police chases in this game are very much still on top. They have a very fun, arcadey feel to them. One thing that I haven't brought up yet, but is definitely worth criticizing, is the tedium. As you move up the blacklist and your requirements increase, racing and milestones get a lot more tedious. Seven races and five milestones to challenge the next blacklist rival is a little ridiculous, and it turned the game into a bit of a slog in the second half. It is nothing but an absolute failure in game design for a game like this one to ever feel like a slog. But that's especially true here because the slog lasts for so long. This is further amplified by the fact that there isn't sufficient variety in the races or milestones to validate the game's length. If you made it to this point in the video, I have to imagine you just turned on the video for ambient noise while working on something else. I want you to know that that thing that you're working on is going to turn out awesome because you are amazing. Or maybe it won't, I'm not a psychic. I do know that you have tremendous power though. That is, the power to make me happy by pressing the subscribe button. I'm not even joking, the dopamine flood that I get from every new subscriber is ridiculous. Obviously don't subscribe if you don't want more from me, but make sure you comment below how much you think I suck. If you do want more though, consider this your call to action. Anyways, thanks for watching.